is Siraj here. I'm an application engineer here at SolidX Solutions. In this quick video, I'll introduce the forming tools functionality in SolidWorks and also show you guys how to create a custom forming tool. Alright, so just to get started in SolidWorks, I've created a simple base flange here. Alright, so before I create a custom forming tool, I'll just introduce a design library and show you guys certain forming tools that already exist in our design library. So in your design library, you've got a bunch of folders here. You can double click on the forming tools folder. You've got things like embosses, flanges, lenses, lures, and rips. So these are five different um, subfolders here. And if I were to just double click on any folder, I've got different types of forming tools. So essentially to use the forming tool and, and to add it into my design, all you need to do, like any SOLIDWORKS library feature, all you need to do is just drag it and drop it onto a face. You can use the tab key here to have a to rotate and align it depending on which orientation you prefer your forming tool to act on. Alright, so once you do that, once you drag it in, it's automatically going to pick up the placement face based on the where you drop it on. Alright, so I can flip the tool and it's going to pick up the top face. Uh, I can flip it again and it will pick up the bottom face. Alright, I also have the options of playing around with uh, the rotation angle if I wanted to act in a specific angle or something. Alright, also what I've got here is configurations. Any library feature designed in SOLIDWORKS, like, which include form tool features, can be designed with configurations. So obviously if I were to design uh, this with a configuration, I could use this drop down menu here to pick up a different configuration and add it to my design. Something that's fairly important to note here is you've got this link to form tool checkbox here. Uh, again, so this link to the form tool checkbox is fairly important if you want design changes made to your form tool to reflect on your final uh, sheet metal product where you've added this form tool to. Alright, so obviously if you check this option, design changes will be re reflected in your final design. Alright, so the form tool feature here it comes with two main tabs. It's very similar to our whole visit where you, you first select the type and then you play around with the position. So if I will just toggle the position tab now it's going to say please use sketch points to locate sub instances of the tool so by default I'm already in the sketch point mode so you can see this point uh, icon here beside my, my pencil icon here I can just click a point anywhere I want where I want to repeat an uh, instance of a forming tool alright so what I can also do here is I can add relations to it I can add a relation between these two points I want them to be horizontal I could add a relation to it I can also add dimensions so it's very similar to our how we play around with locations and uh, how we locate our our whole features that you add using the whole visit so I can add a dimension of 15 mils here and so on alright so I could add dimensions I can add relations here if I'm happy with the location of this um, this form tools I can just hit OK here and uh, it's gonna add the form tools for me alright so if I zoom in you can see the form tools uh, added for me alright so essentially these forming tools are parts that act as dice that bend stretch and form cr and in turn create these features Alright, so you may ask, so you know, you, obviously in source we've got our standard, li standard library features here, we've got this limited options, but how do I create a custom forming tool? I don't want to use a forming tool that exists here in my design library. So again, just to show you guys from the very basics, I'm just going to create a new part here. So file new, part mm. Alright, so let me just start sketching on my top plane here. I'll start a sketch here. Let me start sketching a center rectangle. Alright, so... For the purpose of this example, I'm just going to use dimension 150 mils here. I'll probably say that's going to be 200 mils. That's fine. All right, so I'm just going to create an uh, extra boss here. Maybe I want it to be about 20 mils in thickness. That's fine. All right, so I start off with my simple boss extrude feature. So now let's just say I want to start sketching on my right plane. So let me start a sketch, open up a sketch here on my right plane. I'm just going to start sketching a sketch here. So for purpose of this example, I'm just going to sketch a uh, lure. So I've just hit the A key here to toggle in from my line mode into arc mode. Alright, I've got a sketch here. Uh, I'm just not going to dimension it just for the purpose of this example here. So I'll just show you guys. I'm just going to extrude that. I'm just going to extrude that in uh, both directions. So using my mid plane here, maybe I want this to go 80 mils. I can click OK now. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to design a lure. So essentially, I just need to round this off here, round this face off. So let me just open up a sketch here. I'm going to use my Convert Entities option to just convert that entire face here. Alright, so back to my Features tab. I'm going to do a Revolve Boss. Alright, so I'm going to specify this edge here to be my axis of revolution. Maybe I want this to go 90 degrees. Hit OK, and that's what I can do here. Alright, so obviously I can do this on the, 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 this face as well, or I could even just use my mirror my mirror feature and mirror it about my right plane. It's in the middle here. So features, I'm just going to select my mirror option here, click on mirror, choose the features to mirror, mirror that face that we created just now, click OK. Alright, so that's going to cr create our mirror that revolve feature that we created. Maybe I want to add some uh, fillets. Let's just use my mouse just here. I'm going to pick up that edge here. You just make sure tangent propagation is checked. Uh, yeah, 10 mils uh, for the radius, that's fine. Hit OK there. 
All right, so what I need to do next is I need to remove this this boss extrude face. I essentially I only added this boss extrude face just so I could add a fillet down into the material here. So if I want to remove that, let's open up a sketch on this face here. Again, I'm going to use my corner rectangle. Let's pick up this end point to this end point here. All right, so hit OK here. I'm going to go to features. I'm going to do an extrude cut. I want my extrude cut to go through all. all right, hit OK. Alright, so essentially what we're going to be left with is just our lure feature. Alright, so to create a form tool from this part that we've created, so far it's just like any ordinary, ordinary SOLIDWORKS part. It's just this part 7. We've done not done anything special here. All I need to do is you know toggle up my sheet metal command manager tab here, click on sheet metal here, and I've got a forming tool option here. So if I were to click on this forming tool option, it's going to ask me to specify a stopping face and also a face to remove. So the stopping face would be would refer to the face where this tool will stop cutting. Alright, so let me say I want this flat face here to be my stopping face. I can choose something called faces to remove. So faces to remove will be faces that are cut out of the material once you add it as a forming tool. So I could specify I want this face to, to be removed and it's going to be removed. I don't need to specify a face to remove, but I don't want any faces to be removed. So it's just an added option that you might want to use. And click OK. Uh, you'll see this form tool feature that's added into our design feature manager design tree here. Alright, so essentially a, a face that's in cyan here and you've got a, a face that's uh, in red here and you've got uh, the rest of the faces that are in yellow here. So faces in red here are faces that are going to be removed, faces in yellow are going to be faces that are going to be added and the, the cyan face or this blue face here is going to be the face, the stopping face. Alright, so if I've added, saved this as my forming tool, I'm happy with that. So uh, essentially all I need to do is uh, I need to save it as a forming tool. Alright, so file, save as. Alright, so what you need to do is find your design library um, location and um, go to your forming tools tab here. I could create a new folder if I wanted to. I could say uh, custom uh, new. Alright, I can just hit enter there. I can just double click on it now and I can save my part in my custom new uh, forming tools folder. So I could say this is my new lure. Alright, click save and I'm happy with that. So that's my forming tool saved as a in in my custom folder that I created, so I can just go back to my sheet metal part here. All right, so for the purpose of this example, let me just suppress this uh, the forming tools I added initially. All right, so all I need to do now is go back to my design library. Let me just click on that again. It's going to automatically update. I've got a custom new folder now, and in this custom new folder, I've got a new lure. This is the new lure part that I saved just now. You can right-click on it. Make sure this saves uh, saves a forming tool folder. If it doesn't, there's no ch uh, tick box here. This will not work. It will not recognize this uh, to be a forming tool folder. It will not recognize all these features that you have in this folder to be forming tools. So essentially, to add it again, all I need to do now is to just drag it in. I can place it wherever I want. Uh, placement face. I could flip the tool if I wanted to flip it. Uh, in this case, again, I didn't use any configurations. I'm going to check the option that says link to form tool going to position it, maybe I want to add a dimension between this point and uh, that point here. I want it to be 40 mils for instance. Hit OK. I'll just show you guys again. I'll just add a relation from this point to this point here. I want them to be uh, vertical. I can hit OK now. Alright, so if I'm happy with that, just hit on this, click on this green tick here and it's going to add the forming tool for me. Alright, so the forming tool is added and you can see that this face is removed just because we specified that as a face to remove. Alright, so just to show you guys another good example. Alright, so we've like just to illustrate as well, you know, I've specified that as a face to remove. If I were to go back to my forming tool now, let me just save it as a new forming tool. Alright, so let's again let's repeat the same process. Click on forming tool. Alright, so it's already created a forming tool essentially. So what I need to do here is just click on edit feature here. I can choose maybe I want to remove this feature uh, as a faces to remove. I don't want to add any faces to remove. Just hit OK. It's going to update that for me. If I were to go back to my my part where I've, where I've added my forming tool, let's go back to my part here. Or I hit Control Q to update it. That face is automatically going to be rebuilt into my model. So that's what what I essentially what I mean by when you have the option that says link to form tool, design changes in the form tool will be reflected on the um, where you on on the part where you've added this form tool into. All right, so that's essentially how you can create a custom forming tool. If you've got any questions or anything, just leave a comment in this video and I'll, I'll try and um, help you guys out. Thanks for watching.